Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. Do you want to hear a story? I'm not letting go. Are you ready for this? Follow your heart. I'm going in. This. This is. This is. Blockbuster Smash Up. Welcome to another episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and as each episode, I'll be joined by my awesome co-host, Todd G. Levin, and our special guests as we try to smash one globally accepted good film and one globally accepted bad film into one hopefully cohesive new film for you guys. And I'd like to remind you guys that we are a new show, so if you have a few seconds, if you could hop onto iTunes and leave us a rating and review, that would be amazing, or share the show with a friend. Either way, we appreciate your support, and without further ado, let's dive in and meet our guests. All right, Todd, please introduce... Our wonderful guests. Well, we've got Bron Shea here, friend from college. She has no last name. No. Much like <laughs> much like Prince, Madonna. Yeah, she's, uh, she gave it up. That's right. And, and now, we're so glad to have you here, an icon. The way I you mean, spell amazing. it is just a symbol. It's just a, like a collection. Yeah, how of do you, what is that symbol? If you could describe to the audience. Is this what is, the Bron Shea symbol is. Because this is not a visual medium. What does the Bron Shea uh, symbol look like? I'd say it's like reminiscent of like a dolphin jumping over the ocean. Like, is, oh, wait. Yeah. It's, like the, it's the cover of Free Willy. That's right. I forgot about it that. Right. Is. I was and looking at it upside down. As well. And the soundtrack. <laughs> That's right. You're the first symbol name to be also a soundtrack. <laughs> yes. I was looking at it Which is why the wrong way. So around. very, it's, wow. <laughs> Branche is hugging a, an emoji pillow right now. <laughs> it's the one with the heart eyes. And it's kind of perfect because you speak in emojis via text like a lot. So it's I like, sure do. Noted yeah. amazing. Black this girl, entire podcast. I am black, by the way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very important. Glad we got that out at the top of the episode. <laughs> Do people ever think you're French because of the name? Like um, Ranché? African cab drivers. What? Like Uber. I thought, okay. <laughs> I thought For half that. a moment, people, I thought, you're people thought driver. you were an African yeah. cab driver. That also. Now, Bronche can either be an African cab driver <laughs> or a nice girl. I don't know. I don't know. Well, because on Uber, like, it'll say my name. Okay. And then they'll pull up and they'll be like, start speaking to me in French. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, oh. I don't know French. And like, you don't know French. That makes sense. It's your name. And I'm like, I know I'm the worst black person ever. And then I get <laughs> what? to my what? destination. <laughs> Who are these Uber drivers that you get? <laughs> well, it was when I lived in Chicago. Are you so. supposed oh, okay. to know French? Apparently to them, since really? my name is French, yeah. Yeah. You didn't and, know that, uh, time? No. Um, Branche Marie Faustin. Yeah, and famous. we were uh, laughing before. He was like, the first thing I thought of was Flosten Paradise. <laughs> yeah, when I saw your last name, I was like, Flosten <laughs> Paradise. <laughs> from Fifth Element. I just burst out laughing. And now I'm not going to be able to Which, look at your name without like hearing. Sorry? Just like, Coben Dada. <laughs> <laughs> The it, winner of oh, a thousand bottom lollies and dollies and dollies. I just hear that voice just going <laughs> that's on. That's such head. a weird insight into my brain that that's the first thing that Faustin reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. Is an perfect. imaginary world in Fifth Element. Faust, <laughs> Faustin's. Grand Shea for beer. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, you've really <laughs> driven the point home on my name today. I yeah, love it. Yeah, we really yeah. got to the bottom of all of it. <laughs> yeah. And then so, uh, over here is CJ. Someone anyway, who we've so... never had difficulty <laughs> with his name ever. We've never had a difficulty with no, CJ's no, no. name CJ on CJ Johnson over here, everyone. Yep. Uh, Famously. <laughs> Famously CJ Johnson. No, we, we uh, messed up CJ's name <laughs> once, uh, embarrassingly. Uh, it's CJ Woodring, mm-hmm. and we, we made quite a show about the Woodring <laughs> situation. Uh, and the then podcast. proceeded to, uh, and then proceeded to forget mm-hmm. it entirely when I did the outro. Look, sometimes I do it at different times, That's right. and that would be one of the times. <laughs> so we're, uh, it's my fault actually. <laughs> Uh, CJ, uh, I don't know, Johnson, let's do this. <laughs> so we're, I'm an asshole. So we're having CJ back on the show to um, apologize, but that's the only reason. That's the only reason. So you can, CJ, you can leave. You can you. go. Okay. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> I just want to hear it from you in person. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank God. You're welcome. Well, well, we've met everybody. Yes, we have. We're going to start getting into some personal stuff. Mm-hmm. It's um, going to get real personal. <laughs> it's going to get real real. <laughs> And personal up in here. So, Todd, what is our personal question? So, I feel like I've asked this question in so many words before, but what is, I guess, your desert island movie? Mm. Assuming that on this desert island, there's either, I guess, a projector or, <laughs> or a Blu-ray oh, player <laughs> or a, 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 one of those like TV VCR, like, you know, units that come together kind of thing. It's like a magic mirror, but only gets that one movie. <laughs> and there's electricity. <laughs> 
I feel like if I spend less time watching movies and more time following cables, I think I'll make that. <laughs> but see, you're so mesmerized by this movie that you're like, you know what? This isn't so bad. Oh, Coconuts man. are pretty good. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're the movie that you would bring on a desert island um, to watch for all time. Uh, what? Uh, you you're know, also what mortal this on this island. We didn't. We buried the lead on that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You, you will uh, survive forever, and you'll never die. <laughs> Uh, well, I think for me it would be probably the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh wow! Curse of the Black Pearl. You I know mean, what? That that's kind of making the really best. Well for yeah, the... it's kind of making the best of a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It has <laughs> survival tips, definitely. If you definitely. watch it close enough. Yeah. Uh, How not to dock a ship when you're coming into yes. port? Does he yes. ever get Make marooned? Sure it's not sinking. Is there a maroon? Yeah, he gets scene? marooned in See? the first yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 So you have. You a little... can learn that not uh, tying your back hairs together to make a sea turtle raft will not work. I feel <laughs> what. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. That was a real it deep was, cut on Pirates of the Caribbean 1. I have not seen that movie re- since it came out, reveal. so I have no idea. There's a lot of, uh, you know, dialogue about sea turtles, Todd. I think if you're a big sea turtle fan, you would really like it. Oh, well, please revisit yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like the best, by the way, the funniest answer would be if you're like, what's your Desert Island movie? And someone's like, cast away. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess like, that also works. Why? It does, yeah. You just want to see yourself More over and same. over again? You know what would be amazing is if that scenario, you have Tom Hanks yelling yelling at the volleyball saying Wilson and then you have the person watching it on TV yelling Wilson no actually Tom Hanks <laughs> so you have three people chaining onto imaginary objects and then I think in that Tom moment Tom Hanks chaining on a volleyball you ch- channeling onto Tom Hanks and I think in that moment you have to like have this meta moment of turning around being like wait is someone watching me <laughs> oh, no. and then Jim Carrey is like this is really strange I don't know why. That was a weird all around. Um, uh, what's yeah. the movie he's in recently? I don't know. TV what are you show? About? Oh, what? a Truman Show. A Truman Show. Ah. What does that have to do? Oh, it has nothing. He's being watched. He's being oh, watched. Right. Now, there we go. now he's the watcher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, anyway. Well, good answer. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. We finally got there. <laughs> it's definitely, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. That's great. Aww. Like, I think Raiders. Is almost my favorite, right? Because you I was talked about say, last, last time, time yeah. we talked about Raiders. Yeah, yeah. it it's sort of it, it, Raiders is because it has like a nostalgic place in my heart. In mm-hmm. addition to being basically perfect, mm-hmm. but <laughs> then as a uh, screenwriter, I find Pirates of the Caribbean, and this is just me, but I find it extremely impressive. It's like one of my favorite. Oh, it is written, written really movies. really good, and yeah. the fight scene at the end is extremely entertaining. Like just how it's shot, like going through mm-hmm. the moonlight as skeleton people. Oh, yeah, I don't know why you're looking at yeah. me. I don't remember the movie at all. <laughs> That's okay. I will. I will make eye contact with you for the rest. Don't of the talk podcast. to me ever again. <laughs> Brad, I'm staring directly into your eyes for the rest of the podcast. Okay, <laughs> that's not going to freak cool. her out at all. Uh, Brad, what about you? What uh, your Desert answer? Island movie. My at first, I was going to say Fight Club because that's mm. one of my favorite that's movies. Good. But I'm going to and go. you can develop a multiple personality while on the island. Right, get guys, me these doing. are great survival <laughs> tips. Great picks. But I'd, I'm actually going to go with Usual Suspects. That's oh, like my favorite, cool. favorite movie. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a good one. So, can you hear me the back? One. <laughs> Can you hear me the back? I feel like I would Whoa, want to you keep... thought mine was a deep cut. <laughs> that is real deep on Usual Suspects. Gonna flip you. I just flip love you it. Real. It's such a good movie. All right, everybody. Well, those were our personal questions. We got to know you guys a little bit better, and that'll be taking us to our game, Blockbuster Smash Up. Smash, 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 all right, this is our game blockbuster smash up. This is the game where we take two films, one globally accepted good film and one globally accepted bad film, and we must smash them together canonically, making them one single film forever, and you can never watch the originals ever again. I'm sorry, everyone. So, Todd, yes. you have the bad, bad film, I have the and terrible, I have the good film. I have the terrible movie that I'm that I'm sorry to. Uh, now, I will actually re- say that unleash we're, upon you. We're when we recorded this, we're a little close to Valentine's Day, so mine actually has a little bit of a Valentine's oh, twist on it. Oh, you know that's funny. Uh, mine doesn't at all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. You know what they say: the best Valentine's Day movies have nothing to do with romance. Except I love it, so maybe that's. You know what? That's enough. It's universally accepted <laughs> as enough. bad, but I love it. You I know love what? That's affair. okay. I have, a, I have a sorted love affair with this movie. So well, we're about to find out what it is. You were correct. On the count of three. Mm-hmm. We must smash them together. One, One two, two, three. three. Eternal sunshine of the spotless gentlemen. mind. What? <laughs> no. Yes. This is the greatest oh, idea. Oh, no. What? Okay, 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 okay. What? 
what? The league Who of in the league are we going to ship oh together to make this possible? The league I, of extraordinary gentlemen yes. and wow. eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. What's yeah. so great is that we both chose films that have like five words in the title. Yeah. <laughs> so long. <laughs> so long. That I was kept, smashing. I kept thinking you were going to I couldn't make it all talking. the way through mine because as soon as you were like, League of the Extraordinary, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. Yes. Okay. So here, I'll, I'll start mine first. Go for it. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yes. Is a classic romance, kind of like a drama though, uh, about two people who fell in love had kind of a destructive relationship. It's Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet starring this kind of beautiful, almost indie, experimental type film where they fell apart and they missed each other so much that one of them decided to erase their memories of the other, quite literally erase it through pseudoscience, through a machine. A new uh, uh, ad in the yeah. paper. And the film is done yeah. very much like a memento style because we start with them post-relationship. So we don't know that a mind has already been erased and then we slowly throughout the film start to reveal that this has happened and it's a really tragic but very interesting kind of beautiful love story of just seeing like the lengths that people will go to erase these memories of loved ones because they cared so much and that also kind of the destiny of life that you will even after forgetting these people will continue to crash into one another and uh continue that cycle of love mm, uh, that was beautiful quite beautiful uh, some fun facts about this movie <laughs> um first is this title, the Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind, kind of a pretty famous title, it actually comes from one of the most, uh, it actually comes from one of history's most painful romances. Um, and it was recounted in a poem, that's right guys, I'm gonna do some poetry right now, <laughs> a poem called Elos de Abelard by Alexander Pope. Um, oh. Oh, that's funny because that's um, Pope is mentioned in the movie a lot. The yeah. Kirsten Dunst character is like always quoting, always do, uh, mm-hmm. the Bartlett's uh, quote and, book, and uh, Alexander Pope is like her favorite yeah. uh, quote in there. And this that's line funny. is it's it's four lines. It's how happy is the blameless Vesta's lot, the world forgotten, but the world forgot, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, each prayer accepted and each wish resigned. Is that in the film? I don't think it is. I think it mm. might. Is it actually be. is? Yeah, I think she recites it. Maybe. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Then that was not a fun fact. And I apologize <laughs> for wasting everyone's time. That was, in fact, a reading of the of the script. Uh, um, it was beautiful. Though. An- another fun fact is actually in the movie there are scenes where the actors change. They're in the same room with their old selves from previous memories. Yes. The thing is that's not done through special effects or cutting. <laughs> the director literally would turn to Jim Carrey in different clothes, and as he. Turned turns to go across the the screen to look at him on the other side jim carrey is scrambling behind the camera right. and changing his clothes in real oh, life wow. to awesome. sit down there like without a hat and fix his hair and different outfit michelle gondry is the director and he is uh notorious for practical effects oh that yeah are like mind-bogglingly uh fun to, to watch <laughs> all right so that was the good movie todd what's the bad movie again so this movie is uh the league of extraordinary <laughs> gentlemen which i will disagree with you a little bit because i do like that movie well you you and I we've talked like this, this movie but under the definition of, of a bad movie it is it's universally accepted yeah. as a terrible film yeah even though we like it because of the sort of um, because we have hearts and you know <laughs> proper well, it's, understanding it's really, of substance it's got a really big imagination and it, it's got <laughs> it the, the workings of things that we do love even if it doesn't really work out as yeah, well as it should that you could probably the take League of there. Extraordinary Gentlemen is um, either in our world or a, a universe uh, that's all, all universe literary world you're n- no it was a historical documentary wasn't it a historical documentary? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, uh the british government enlists the help of alan quartermain from king solomon's minds and all of the uh all of the, those british stories from literature uh, he's a real person in this universe to gather together a league of extraordinary gentlemen basically og avengers that's right that's yeah, right yeah. but li- literary avengers yeah. yeah in the literary uh world to combat a secret evil just plaguing their world basically and so he gets together with the invisible man uh, Mina Harker of uh, Dracula fame Dorian Gray from the picture Dorian Gray Tom Sawyer Mm -hmm. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Captain Nemo and they together go and fight who eventually you learn is the ultimate baddie in literature, Moriarty. Fun facts about the film, I guess. Alan Moore, it's based off of an Alan Moore comic. Yes. And he hates it with a burning passion. Although he hates everything yeah. that's ever been made in Any truth. Adaptation. <laughs> truth, but this was after From Hell, he thought this was going to go better and mm. he hated it more. And then it, he vowed to just not 
let his uh, work ever kind of go into a movie ever again and get mm-hmm. adapted. Same thing happened apparently with Sean Connery blames this movie on ruining his career. That's right. You know, he like, left uh, acting after He this never movie. did another movie. Um, yeah. You know, and that's what's funny is that this movie that I love so much, not only do people hate watching it, but the people that were involved in it, <laughs> it left a, a, a searing, you know, just awful regret on their sort of career and their memory. And, you know, they just did not like making this movie yeah but i love it and it's awesome (laughs) and so now now we have to smash these two movies together (laughs) a movie about uh you know the tragedy of romance and literary superheroes a movie about memory should be pretty easy to do (laughs) guys so typically with our movies when we smash them together we have to do a cold open so i i have an idea for for a a cold open here okay so it is uh inside a doctor's office (laughs) And uh, in in walks uh, Alan Moore, and Alan Moore is <laughs> just so distressed about how Watchmen went, and and everything, and uh, and he's and he's in there, and uh, in the neighboring room he catches the eye of like a, a man with like kind of silver hair, but he can't he couldn't quite see who it was, but he thinks he knows who that was, but he's like no that couldn't have been who it was, <laughs> so he sits down in the room, and the doctor goes like are are you really sure about this Alan? He's like yes. I want to get rid of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen <laughs> forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the opposing room, we have a older Scottish gentleman who's also in a chair <laughs> saying, I'd like to not have this movie in my brain anymore. <laughs> it ruined my life. <laughs> so Sean Connery is being strapped into the same machine. And because they turn him on at the same time, their minds get linked while League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is being wiped from uh, both of their minds. Oh, that is the cold open. <laughs> oh my god! So we're we're in both of their minds, and they they okay. drift. They must drift okay. together because just like in Pacific Rim, yes. the drift is very important <laughs> for anything to happen. Yet it is not explained I'm, why. I'm down for this as long as that means that we now have Alan Moore. Oh yeah, Alan and Moore Sean and Sean Connery as like grumpy old couple. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. And they it's, both, it's a love relationship. They actually <laughs> don't know that they're in the room. You know, the other room. You know, uh, you know, trying to forget Sean, each other. Sean you know, Connery yeah. hates Alan Moore for creating the thing that destroyed his career right. and, and Alan, Alan Moore yeah. hates Sean Connery for being in the thing that mm-hmm. destroyed his love for That's his creations right. but without movies. working together they can't both erase each other they from can't. each other's minds exactly wow, they, they're there reminding so they gotta, they gotta team up yeah. these doctors are very bad at their jobs they schedule <laughs> the worst people together Oops. <laughs> so that's our cold open where do we go from here so what's what's our what's our next inciting incident inside because something has to change I think what you gotta do is start going through the projects that both of them have been involved with in their lifetime mm-hmm. so instead of literary so Sean Connery's characters w- wiping all his like James Bond adventures well because they they're, they're trying to wipe the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen but because something fucked up and they're both in each other's heads basically they get off track basically yeah. the world that they create that they both bring to the table is a mind meld of two different worlds being Alan Moore's creative repertoire and yep. and the movies that Sean Connery has been in so instead mm-hmm. of all the literary characters it's uh <laughs> they're all sean connery's it's all like well it's all like sean connery the characters either sean connery characters <laughs> or like james bond it's, like, you know, it's, yeah. it's the guy from zardoz it's, it's zardoz, it's zardoz james sean bond, connery highlander oh my god uh you know just like all these characters and then for on alan moore's it's like you know there's just johnny depp you know in from hell is just there <laughs> and you know like dr manhattan with the big blue swinging dick is just like walking well, around i think what happens yeah. when we, i think what happens when we start is they start to wipe the memories of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. And they're like in these scenes together and they're like, yeah, I really hated this scene as well. And they're like, they're watching it unfold and then they have like this moment where just like in Eternal Sunshine, they're both lying on like a, you know, the ice somewhere. Because there's a part in the movie in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, they're in like the Arctic for some reason. It doesn't matter. It's at the end of the movie. Yeah. And they're lying there in the Arctic on the snow just like Eternal Sunshine and he's like, like Jim Carrey says, he's like, you know what, this, this moment, this moment's <laughs> This moment's perfect. This is a perfect Sean Connery accent. (laughs) So I think Sean Connery turns to look at Alan Moore, and Alan Moore starts to fade away into the darkness. He's like, no, no, and he chases after him, and he grabs him. He's like, we've got to get out of here. We've got to save League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and they're they're both on the same page. You know what? We equally kind of like this story. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's ours. Well, I think they realize that 
they can't erase the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen without beginning to erase all of the other things that they've in their life done yeah. in their in their lifetime. And so, so they have they, to form their own mind league of extraordinary gentlemen <laughs> to fight to fight. To fight Doctor No, <laughs> who has oh, manifested yes. himself in, in the, dream, the dream as at first a shadowy figure, and then we come to learn that it is in fact Doctor No. Almost um, every scene we see Moriarty's character in the movie, it is actually the face of this Doctor. That's right, and he he has a. Uh, I think he's basically you know erasing their memories because you know go back to the Doctor's office. That's what he's actually doing. You know their brains are all hooked up, and he's like you know they're they're kind of like actually going through and erasing. You can't see their this. Memories. Todd actually has a real brain, and he's. Poking things that's right. Doing. That's right. We, we take our props very seriously on this yeah. audio medium podcast. That's right. So <laughs> anyway, as Doctor No ha- is uh, in the uh, doctor's office, systematically erasing both Alan Moore and Sean Connery's so uh, who, brains. So who are we yeah. pulling for this League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? We're definitely getting uh, Zardas. Zardas. Which, if anyone doesn't know Zardas, pause. Yeah. Type in Zardas <laughs> on Google search. Yes, just Google click, image search click Zardoz. Image. Yeah, or video. Uh, and just if watch you a see video. a uh, Zardas, if you see Sean Connery in a ponytail, red spandex, and red suspenders, yeah. and some it. weird, just weird shit going on, that's Zardas. That's Zardas, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> yes. Okay, so then James Bond is obviously going to be there. Um, I think. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, and you know these are like avatars at this point it becomes like multiplicity for oh, Sean Connery for Sean Connery I want to watch this so bad right who else has Sean Connery played just Sean there? Connery what? teaming up with Sean Connery <laughs> yeah Sean Connery's so uh, uh, Highlander this? Highlander's in there too you I know think. it could only be better than one Sean Connery <laughs> is all the Sean Connery's we've got Sean Connery from Entrapment he's in a Speedo See, that's, that's the thing because like there's a lot of those Sean Connery movies in, for, in, in a while there like in the 90s that were like they're basically the same character they're basically yeah. the same like guy the Rock and Entrapment. What's They're the just difference Sean between Connery. the Sean Connery characters? At a certain point, we all believe that Sean Connery would rob and burgle places <laughs> in his spare time. Yeah. But be so suave about but it. But he's so damn suave. Yeah. The only thing that I remember about that movie is Catherine Zeta-Jones' butt as she's going through the lasers. I think... Epic. Wait, was there more to that movie? No, I think that, that was, was just it. Oh, okay. That was <laughs> it was one scene, right? Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The movie was a two-hour examination of how to get through a laser grid. <laughs> and Sean Connery's eyebrows. And Sean Connery's <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> As he dresses like Steve Jobs, it was a multifaceted <laughs> movie. <laughs> Had a lot to offer. Who? Uh, who? Uh, what's that? What else is in Sean Connery's career? So we get like three Sean Connerys, and at a certain point, Sean Connery realizes that all of his movie careers were very similar, and he's like, <laughs> "Damn it, I did a lot of the same films." <laughs> just take the most disparate st- ones. Oh, the, uh, the Medicine Man, guys. Yeah. What? Medicine Man. What is that? That's where he's like a cancer research doctor. Oh, I've in the that. Amazon. Oh. And he discovers a cure for cancer in, in the sugar. I've discovered a cure for cancer in the sugar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he's going to offer a lot to the team. And then, <laughs> and then I think, bring a lot to bear. I think Sean Connery as Alan Quartermain tries to like join the fun. And they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> and they're like, he's like, uh, no, I, not not Quartermain. No, just, <laughs> just not him. Just go, still no. trying, still trying to partially save League of Extraordinary right. Gentlemen. And then on Alan because the Moore's, machine has gone off course. It is just deleting everything. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's a it's a matter. Now who's Alan Moore bringing in? Alan Moore, I think, is bringing in. Uh, um, he's bringing in some Watchmen. So we've bring, got yeah. a naked blue man following yes. them around. Yes, <laughs> uh, giant blue car. They're all asking like, why? Why was he naked? Naked so much, and he's like, "Yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just what I'm into." And then I think um, definitely Jack the Ripper is in there for sure. Yeah, Jack, the worst teammate. Yeah, just Sean <laughs> Connery is just dropping off randomly. And like, then uh, Swamp, when Jada, Sean Connery, go? and then Swamp Thing. Yes, yeah, Swamp Thing is a Alan Moore creation. That's right. Oh so you have a giant bush man who's part of this team. Yeah. So eventually, um, and while this is going on, these doctors, Dr. No, not very professional. He is uh, he's doing drugs with Kirsten Dunst, <laughs> and they are dancing around the room. Yeah, right. Elijah Wood is there. They're spilling junior mints inside uh, uh, the brain. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just not, they're not a very professional crew at all. Yeah. So I think at a certain point, the doctor knows that this is getting off track, that they are actually fighting this deletion. And they are fighting it by actually reenacting these classic uh, movie scenes. Except, you know, between Kirsten Dunst and, and the Elijah Wood Doctor No character, like they have to recreate the scene. No, 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 no. Inside the mind, uh, Sean Connery and Alan Moore have to reenact 
scene. So like Alan Moore and Sean Connery are reenacting scenes between like Catherine Zeta Jones and Sean Connery. So they're like making out. There's a lot of Alan Moore dipping through laser grids <laughs> <Yes>. and spandex. <laughs> oh no! He it, it gets really it gets really close because his beard is so long it catches quite a few lasers. Um, so what's our third act finale here? We have to have a, a kind of a, a point where they they come to a, a crossroads. Was them up against the doctor? Does the doctor have any uh, motivation beyond just doing his job? Look, he's a guy who's trying to do his job. You know, he's, he's like, a he's a nine to fiver. He's yeah. got you know. In fact, we take about thirty minutes to explore his home life. <laughs> we follow him. He goes home. <laughs> his kid's really struggling on the t ball team, and like he's just getting a lot of shit from his teenage daughter. But she's just going through a phase, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. And uh, we really get personal with Doctor No. <laughs> We realize, you know, not everyone's a villain at all times. Yeah. It's a really deep film. We realize that maybe we shouldn't know Dr. No. Also, well. Michael Gondry directs this film, so all the shots are weirdly done in strange perspectives. Right, but Love it's it. Ma- in this universe, it's Michael instead of Michelle. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weird twin brother of That's right. It's the bizarre Michelle version Gondry. of Michelle Gondry. And he's, he's a woman. Yeah, and he's and, a woman. Which right. in this version, yeah, he doesn't do everything in practical effects. Everything is CGI. So, like, right. his daughter is CGI. <laughs> she's just a CGI person. His wife's a CGI character. That's awful. The entire movie is shot on just a green screen set with one <laughs> doctor's chair that they all sit in. It's a really big chair. Yeah. Yeah. They take turns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the, what's the final push of this film? I think... I mean, is it a final fight in the doctor's office? I think basically what they have to do is after they save their own movies. Yeah. Be, by just recreating the famous scenes because like no one else remembers anything else. They have to um, save each other. They have to save. They have to, the, to basically redo the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Wow. So the, that's the, the final, entire movie. So yeah. wow, that's the final one. So they're like, look, this is the cornerstone of what they're doing. If we don't. It's a four we hour do this film. if we don't yet. Yeah, it's, it's a quite a long <laughs> film, mostly about League of Extraordinary Just Gentlemen an excuse to watch and movie, Alan yeah. Moore. Most people are walking out like, I don't know who Alan Moore is. That I was, never saw League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That was, Why was this movie four hours long? <laughs> that was um, artistic. <laughs> Is what people say. So when quite they literally, the last two hours of this movie is just League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but, but, but with Alan Moore and with Sean Connery playing every role. R- exactly. Yes. Yeah. But it's not Alan Moore and Sean Connery. It's Sean Connery as Bond, Sean Connery <laughs> as Zardoz, Sean wow. Connery. You know. So they remake League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's right. With it is with all the Bond with all the Shans. Yeah. It it is <laughs> it is terrible, and they both wake up and they. Uh, no, I think I think they learn to love it. Oh really? Is they yeah, the no, scene? of they course. Because like in Eternal yeah. Sunshine, like they right. have to come back to that. They both learn. They both basically, you know, in recreating the film, I think there's moments where both Sean Connery and Alan Moore are looking at each other, you know, and and they oh get they get into the roles. Like Alan Moore is just like, no, you know what we have to do. We have to, do, and Sean Connery, and they they finish each other's sentences. You know, you know, <laughs> you know what it is. Montage scene, Alan. <laughs> you yes. know what it is. Okay, so the final act, they realize they have to redo League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yes. because yeah. it is the cornerstone of why their mind is being erased, and they start to so fall, they, fall back in love but, with it. But mm. it's because they're like, we'll do it right this time. We'll use your words and my quality acting. <laughs> so they get to Alan Moore's like, I always thought this scene would be done better if it was this. And like Alan Moore injects all of his weird, wacky shit in the movie sure, that like yeah. wasn't in it. So it's like very true, crazy Alan Moore. And Yeah. And then, and then Sean Connery is, is like, you know, casting the roles and he's just like, Zardoz Connery. I think you should play Mina Harker. Dude, Zardoz, Con- <laughs> Zardoz Connery as Mina Harker. Oh my god. Bond, James Bond Connery. I think that you should be the uh, Nemo. Nemo is the submarine. I think you should be Nemo. <laughs> so yeah. basically, it's just a cast of Conneries with Alan Moore's writing. So right, it's right. Amazingly mm-hmm. weird, but also kind of amazing. And it kind of works. And here's the here's the big final push as they're doing it. In a very again, this movie is meta as hell. Right. The doctor's like, I can't seem to keep it on track. So he calls in the studio because he because that made League of Extraordinary Gentlemen to come in because they controlled the property, so they know the property well. Oh, there you go. So yeah. this is a meta commentary about the studio trying to control the creation <laughs> oh of God. a movie in the artist's minds as it is happening, people. This is a meta movie. <laughs> and it is the artists battling the studio as they create the film itself. They're essentially trying to prevent now Dr. No and the with the help of I guess the the big bad studio from erasing the film, but Dr. No and the studio doesn't know that because they were hired 
to, to erase, erase from their the mind. film. Yeah. You know, so it's like a race against that kind of situation. They're trying to, uh, they're they're recreating the scenes as the as scenes are being deleted. deleted they are yeah. recreating. That's right. They're <laughs> so they're being wiped them. away and they redo the entire oh scene. God, so right. there are some scenes where Sean Connery makes out with Sean Connery. That's right. There's some scenes <laughs> where right. Sean Connery kills Sean Connery. Yeah. I mean, it kind of gives the full. I mean, this is an Oscar worthy Sean Connery performance. He is doing every single role right and i think at the end they they defeat uh dr no and then you know and i think they they pop out i guess of the of and they have to they have to kill the doctor and they have to kill <laughs> no too far okay maybe uh maybe they just have a nice stern I think they conversation just, I think with they, them they about they get scared and they just leave the uh dr no and the kirsten dunn's character yeah yeah she's still dancing they're still on drugs. Well, they just get really scared like, you know and in internal sunshine you know they just like leave mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know, they just like they're just like uh, uh, pack your bags let's get out of here and then and just like get out of there and then i think they just come out of this uh you know induced coma or whatever problematically they their brain is kind of exposed because the doctor just left very unprofessional so they're just sitting there and they're just i think they're sitting there in separate rooms and it's like alan <laughs> yeah sean i i i owe you an apology <laughs> and i think they have kind of a heartfelt conversation about right. careers and responsibilities of things and mm. Maybe they get a coffee afterwards. And I you think, know, after they put their brains back together. Right, right. After they put their brains back together. <laughs> very, very important. That, that scene's kind of cut because yeah, you know, yeah, was, we don't really want to see that cut happen. Cut for time. I mean, it's a four-hour movie yeah, already. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, the director's cut a lot of brain surgery. We don't know this, but right. Sean Connery is a great brain surgeon. But <laughs> they left on the cutting room floor. He, ins- he insisted it was in the movie. It was unnecessary. So but, I, I think they realized that even though the movie that they just recreated inside of their own heads is a fake movie and that no one is actually going to be able to see the Sean Connery plays all roles version of, <laughs> of uh, League, League of, of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen, Gentlemen. Um, that you know they both know I think Sean Connery believes now that that was his finest acting moment and Alan Moore is like that was my finest adaptation Writing. even though it was something that they you know only share within themselves now, and it reinvigorates mm. their career and they go out and you, you know what you know, I think they do is, the, do fi- some more is the final scene is after they leave the shop and they have this reinvigoration of, of, of just acting passion we cut to a, a little small theater in Los Angeles, just a small theater, <laughs> and we pan down and we see a, a kind of a marquee that says, uh, Alan Moore presents League of Extraordinary Eternal Gentlemen, sunshine. starring Sean Connery. <laughs> Eternal and Sunshine in, of the Extraordinary Gentlemen. And it's just a one-man play of Sean Connery <laughs> playing all characters yes. of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with like Alan Moore on the side in a small theater, just like, yes, exactly. And it's <laughs> Sean Connery finally gets to play every role like he did in his dream. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, you know, and then you pull back again and oh, there's wow. people watching this movie. Oh God. And it's like, you're <laughs> we in the too theater far. watching the movie. <laughs> Jacob's ladder style. <laughs> and then it keeps going back and back and you just keep going in and out of this, you know, <laughs> undulating <laughs> meta thing. And then uh, your brain explodes, I guess. Somewhere, wow. right, somewhere right now, Charlie Kaufman has a giant erection. I just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Charlie Kaufman is so excited about this film. Yeah, he loves it. Wow. Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich. <laughs> Connery, 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 Connery. Okay, so... What the hell is this film called? It's got to be either Eternal Sunshine of the Extraordinary Gentleman or The League of Spotless Eternal Minds. Eternal Sunshine? <laughs> the League of Spotless Minds. Extraordinary Mines. Sunshine? <laughs> I liked Cast of Conaways. What? Oh, no, Con- Cast of Conaways. What was it? Huh? Cast of Con... Con- Sean Connery's? Connery's. Oh, cast of Connery's? Yes, yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so high, it's a lighthearted. Tis, tis the cast of Connery's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Like a that. movie called Cast of Connery's. <laughs> the cast poster Connery. can only be Sean Connery's face, just slightly different, like 15 times. Oh, right, but god, it's like there. Bond Connery, Zardoz Connery, yeah. Highlander mm-hmm. Connery, mm-hmm. Connery, Connery. Con- Connery, Connery. <laughs> Connery, Connery, Connery. It was a weird movie that he made a movie <laughs> called Connery. There's it a, was there's so a strange. Video, yeah, where he Sean plays, Connery is Connery. And he, play, he, he plays himself, but with like an, an exorbitant amount of makeup on to just make him look, look exactly like he actually already does. <laughs> wow. Cast of Connery's. <laughs> so we, we've had a lot of weird smash-ups on this show, Todd. That is probably the weirdest one we've ever had. I think so. Yeah. Anytime where you have Zardoz Sean Connery <laughs> making out with Entrapment Sean Connery, we've gone too far down the rabbit hole. I don't know. I think we went just far enough. All right. And that'll take us to our game, the old family favorite, Mary, Mary Fuck, Fuck Kill. Kill. 
Sean Mary, Connery? Mary fuck kill. <laughs> Mary fuck, Mary fuck kill. Mary fuck, Mary fuck kill. Mary fuck, Mary fuck kill. All right, this is our game, Mary fuck kill. This is the game where we have three movies. We must choose of those three which ones we would marry, which ones we would fuck, and which one we would kill. So, Todd. What are our three movies? So in honor of Grease Live, which happened recently, <laughs> oh, that yeah. was so yeah. wonderful. I don't know if people watched it, but... I, it, d- I heard so many good things. I loved it. I love Grease. It's a great... Uh, I love the film and everything, and, and the, the Grease Live paid a lot of homage to the film, and, right. and that was great. Uh, I wanted to do uh, movies with school dances. Sure. Okay. There's a lot of those. Yeah, so <laughs> I've got... A lot more than I think people think. <laughs> so I've got, I've got Grease, of course, Footloose. Oh, wow. And mm. Carrie... <laughs> what? Oh wow! Well, I mean, they're great, great, great movies that all have school dances in them. Wow, one of those you shouldn't kill because I hear things go pretty, pretty <laughs> bad, boy. Uh, yeah, and you know, Back to the Future was on the list, but then the thing is, is that everyone would just marry Back to the Future because, like, why would you not marry Back to the Future? I mean, some of people course, might fuck Back to the Future. Does anyone already have their their uh, romantic choices <laughs> or their murderous choices? You know what? Let's not. Let's not play to the positive. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a real hard dig, you want to get in right now. Now's um, the time. I guess I would. <laughs> okay, okay. I think I'm going to marry Greece because Ooh. I love Greece. It's a good reason. I mean, it's the one that you want. <laughs> the one that I want. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's, uh, what? That's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. What are you quoting? <laughs> no, I just, I, I love, I, you know, it would be really great to, I guess, live in that world. And so, like, I'd probably end up with Frenchie, you know, and I, I wouldn't mind marrying someone like Frenchie and the Grease universe. There's always dancing. It's always high school. There's the hand jiving. Hand jiving? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> that sounds, are you sure that's... <laughs> I thought you were going to say something totally different. Baby. Like, okay. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Can you give me a little bit of that hand jiving tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been a tough day at work. I just need a little just, bit of hand jiving. Can I just get a hand jive? <laughs> just, God, just you know, we never, ha- we never hand quick. jive anymore. We can I got like 15 really minutes. I got to be somewhere. <laughs> quick just a real quick hand jive. <laughs> just a real quick uh, HJ. <laughs> Todd, the hand jive. What? I want to dance real fast. All right. All right. So uh, I would marry Grease. Um, I think I would uh, kill Footloose. Whoa. Uh, Because there should be no town in which dancing is illegal. (laughs) That's ridiculous. Anyway, and that means that I would have to, that that I wouldn't have to. I'd get to fuck Carrie. Yeah, good for you. Because Now, what are the positives of fucking Carrie? (laughs) Well, uh, erasing the fact that, uh, forgetting the fact that she's in high school, uh, <laughs> Maybe you can to be, be fair. School. To be fair, yeah. all, I'm in high school. Yeah, of yeah, course. Exactly. Scenario, Time to be fair, all of them are in high school. Yeah. I think like, Carrie, even though like all of them are 50 years old right, and they made right. Greece, I'm, I'm also exactly. So I guess you're, you're right. <laughs> Frenchie would also be. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, they're all <laughs> high school movies. Uh, <laughs> so we're assuming we are all in high school in this scenario. Um, yeah, no, I think because Carrie. First of all, I love that movie and it's awesome. I also, if I was at the high school that Carrie was at, I'd like to try and appease Carrie just so she wouldn't yeah. like go insane and kill everybody. Plus. I'd like to give her a friend of some kind because she know everyone uh, hates uh, her. I'd a, say a, a fuck buddy. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Hand drive buddy. Like buddy. Yeah. Hand, hand drive buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you she's know, freaking I, out. She's like, Carrie, just a little little hand drive. I, I, th- I think, think she'll we'll be okay. I think she would she would not go as nuts if she just like people liked her and noticed her and and were friends with her. <laughs> she's laying and, down after. She's like, you know, I was thinking about killing everybody in my school, but <laughs> that orgasm after was this, just, I mean, I, I feel pretty good. I think I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> And listen, if the pig's blood still happened and then, you know, she wants to kill everybody, I think I would be spared because I oh, gave yeah. her an orgasm. <laughs> you know? You, Todd! <laughs> thanks for the hand job. You get to live. <laughs> it just moves on. Yeah, like, cool. exactly. Thank God. Exactly. I'd be I'd be spared. Hey, everybody, remember, just hand jive each other a little more often. I think we'll have a little bit of a better That's society. Correct. Does anyone have yeah. their uh, romantic entanglements after that? I was going to go somewhat similar in that, like, well, I was gonna, I was gonna marry Carrie. Uh, okay. One for the rhyme. Two for the, uh, show. for the show. Babe, remember, I only married you because it rhymes with me. <laughs> I couldn't not. I just you wanted to marry that Carrie. You say to me every day. Why? And then a bottle just can hit you in the head. From <laughs> oh, no. But no, but to yeah, to avoid her wrath. 
to be her <laughs> her loved one. True. Um, Again, wow. Two. You guys. Well, she's terrifying. I mean, she's terrifying. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I would probably I would kill Greece for yeah. her. I would kill them for her because they are the people she would hate. Oh. Most. They would if they were in the same universe. I like this concept of wow. m- melting Surely the would. universes they, together. They would dump like they're all at the yeah. same high school. You'd be like, see, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. on your yeah. side. Yeah. I, I yeah. killed them. We're yeah. on the same <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah, we're It'd be a very confusing high school because you know you can't dance. Nope. But everyone's dancing. Everyone's hand driving. Yeah, and there's like someone who could potentially kill everyone. That's true. Yeah. Yes, and then yeah, so I would end up fucking Footloose. Yeah, one because I find it the sexiest of the movies. That's a good point. I would say. It yeah. is a good point. Um, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon's Hello. all over that movie. Yeah, and you'd get to have sex Things. with that song. Yeah, that song's what, great. Yeah. Footloose. Footloose. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's a, great a great song. song. I mean, you could. That, that is my sex song. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not to reveal too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you cut. You get, a, you get a good rhythm going with Footloose. I mean, everybody cut, everybody cut. I mean, there's everybody a lot of come, there's a lot of good, come. like a lot of good beat with that. I think you can make yeah. that work. Everybody, you know what? Everyone listening, try that tonight. Yeah, let us, let us know how it goes. Fucking Footloose is like the foot fetish uh, choice. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what? <laughs> no that comment. Was, that was a real story behind. It. Yeah, you like those loose feet. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Guys, let's keep this game of Mary Fuck Kill PG. <laughs> keep it PG. Jeez. So sorry. So I actually would fuck Carrie. Oh, all right. Ooh, now why would you fuck Carrie? Because I've never been with a girl. Oh, okay. okay. But when i want to be the crazy bitch like wow I want to that's true i'm not gonna go you nailed it yep. be tenderly cared for by some girl like i want to be like let's have a crazy ass you fucking night. nailed it plus she <laughs> i don't know why you brought the pig blood in here but you know what <laughs> <laughs> i'm down to experiment let's get weird with yeah, this yeah you'd have to go into it knowing like this is gonna be some weird right shit. oh yeah but then you know there's some weird maybe like levitation stuff like, I don't oh, know that's what i'm saying Do plus you she's know got what? some extra yeah. sensory stuff going on she's got some like gene gray powers going on there I right mean, this is kind of like pre Jean Grey. She could probably do multiple things at once, which is probably going to be a lot of and fun. And I'll be oh, there wow. for it. And plus, it. by the way, <laughs> Sissy Spacek, let's not forget, is gorgeous. So you're going to yeah. fuck Carrie. Now, well, she's going to fuck me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carrie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie, take me to task, Carrie. <laughs> some, some hot action with Carrie. What's next? Hot action with Carrie, and then I'm going to kill Footloose. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Poor Kevin Bacon. Poor yeah, Kevin. I think he's gotten killed twice so He's, far. We're going to cut him. Yeah. Footloose. You just because yeah. you got to marry Greece. I mean, I didn't make the rules. Right? Yeah. You have to marry It's in the you contract must. of watching Greece. <laughs> You Once must. you watch it, you <laughs> must marry it. True. But if I marry Greece, I want to be able to wear, what is it, Sandra Dean's little, like, black skirt. Oh, yeah, 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 the, the leather. It's oh, every yeah. day. It's a, it's a hot outfit. The leather dig. It's a good outfit. You can be friends with uh with young John Travolta. Yeah. Who's the best Ooh. John Travolta. Uh, the only good John Travolta, because <laughs> yeah. now he's so just good. creepy well, uncle John Travolta. That, that kind of leads me <laughs> to mind. I would also marry Greece. Okay. Now, not just for the points that you've given, but because I want a magical flying car. I mean, you get, <laughs> there are fucking we forgot about there that. are fucking yeah, magical point. cars all over that movie. You can have got sex in the lightning. back seat yeah. in the air. Uh, grease lightning yeah. in the air. I never have to pay for airfare ever again. <laughs> I got a fucking flying car. But the gas, though. Oh, uh, they're in. in <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, it's systematic, high dramatic. It's grease lightning. <laughs> it's grease lightning. I want that magic car. So I have the magic car. Yeah. Uh, I am at, I'm going to fuck Carrie as well because I also want the crazy yeah, just telekinesis. Like, I'm look, so uh, glad that look. this is a shared experience. Dude, okay. <laughs> I, I love comics. I'm going to put on my uh, my Wolverine outfit. She's going to be my Jean Grey and we're going to get real weird up in so that So you're going to be a furry and she's going to be... That's not what a furry is. <laughs> A Wolverine outfit? <laughs> it's called role-playing tub. <laughs> it's called role-playing, my friend. But yeah, we're going to get real weird with telekinetic powers. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be real weird. Nobody knows what's going to happen. That's why you might die. <laughs> so uh, fuck Carrie, and then I'm going to have to kill uh, Footloose. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no town should ban dancing. That's insane. Yeah, that's just... Kill that town. I mean... Yeah. They get dancing at the end. That's some Puritan ridiculousness right there. But also, there. like, what's the dancing in the movie? Kevin Bacon, like, dances through an entire warehouse nowhere near the music that he's dancing to. Like, clearly that town is just insane. So, wow. Well, guys, thank you for coming on. Thank and, you uh, so much. Merry Been fucking great. and killing and uh, making, <laughs> what was that, cast of Connery? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The most insane meta film of all time. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned a lot about Sean Connery and hand driving. And as always, we'll be posting a new episode every other week. And if you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, we'll head over to partialarc.com. That's arc with a C. 
Of course, you can email us any questions or your good or bad movie recommendations at blockbustersmashup at gmail.com. Or follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PartialArc. Now, if you'd like to hear more and see more from C.J. Woodring, check him out at funny-shorts.com. And if you want to follow up with Branche Marie Faustin, you can do that by checking out her YouTube channel, Postgrad Chef. And be sure to follow Todd on Twitter and Instagram, at TG11. Thanks for listening, and see you on the next episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. Let's go home. Let's go home.